Well, so I grew up in a devout Roman Catholic family, and um, I also went to a, a school, a lycée, a French lycée called René Descartes. So I had very little choice <laughs> in the matter. I believe in Cartesian free will, and the, the idea is there's this real Christoph, the soul floating above the waters of the brain, and when, it, when, when I decide to move my right hand, a la Ben Libet, then then you know my this Christoph perturbs the water of my prefrontal cortex, and that prefrontal cortex then generates all the action that 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 ultimately leads to uh, to my raising uh, my right hand. Yeah, so this is an experiment we did in our lab uh, with uh, Uri Maus, um, and so here it's a classical Ben Libet experiment. I actually just want to show some data. So here, what you have, it's a variant of Ben Libet. So here you sit and you. Um, there's a, a, a tone going on at, at, ze at zero, and then you're supposed to move one, one hand, whatever hand you feel like. So you decide freely when there's a gong, you do this or you do this, whenever you feel like. And then you record from with the, using EG array uh, the data, um, the, the evoked potential, and you average. You have to average, in this case, uh, 40 times. And then you can see clearly, you can predict quite accurately, uh, as Al said, that's a classical Ben Libet experiment. It's now been replicated in many, many labs. You can predict you know, up to half a second, well, up to a second and a half before the onset of movement, you can predict. And typically, if you are a subject you know, doing the clock experiment, like half a second or so before. So that, that clearly shows this, this naive idea that I also agree with you, many people have, particularly if you sort of you go and ask the proverbial person on the street, many of them will say, yeah, the, the real me makes a decision and then you know, my brain act, acts it out. And, and of course, the, the Libet experiment profoundly contradicts that. Now, you can do a more sophisticated version of this experiment. The trouble is, why do you need to average? Well, probably you need to average because you're very far away. Right? The, the EG is like looking at the bottom of the ocean, but you are on the top of the, the ocean, and all you see is waves, right? That's why the, the waves are very small, and they're very noisy. So it's much better to go directly to the source of the brain, in a, which you can do, of course, not in regular people, but in a patient. So then we work with patients that have, for reasons of epileptic uh, remedial surgery, that have electrodes implanted. And then you can do a simple game with them. Maybe we can yeah, play we'll this. Play. So it's called the penny matching game. Very simple game that, so Al, you're the patient, and I'm the, the experimentalist, and I tell you, we, uh, yeah. So Al if you can tell us uh, go, and whenever, when you say go, we raise one of our hands. And if we raise the same hand, let's say if we both raise the right hand, no, I mean your hand and this hand, then you win. And if we raise different hands, then I win a dollar. Okay, very okay. simple game. Okay. Right? Not very complicated. So. Um, Go. I, win. <laughs> I win. Go. I, I win again. <laughs> right, so I, in this case, I won twice, and he uh, he won uh, once. Yeah. Now, so now you can uh, now remember we have EEG electrodes, well, sort of intracranial EEG electrodes in the head of the patient. So we are much closer to the generation of the actual neural signal because we don't have the intervening skull. So you get a much cleaner signal, and now you can on single trials. In, in real time, on single trials with far above chance probability, you can predict is the patient on the next trial going to move the left hand or the right hand. And this is pretty cool because now it's a real game. There's real consequences, right? The Ben Libet experiment, there wasn't any consequence. Whether you did this or this didn't really matter. Here you win a little bit. You know, you win a little bit money or you lose a little bit money. And so once again, yes, it is true. In this case, uh, you have access to, uh, I would have access to your data and I can tell you what you're going to do before you have, before you know. So there's no question what precedes what? In this case, there's no question that my conscious feeling of having initiated an action is, is already is, uh, sort of follows 500 milliseconds after something in my brain. So somewhere in the catacombs of my brain, uh, below my level of consciousness, some integrator, when, uh, you know, some integration goes up, and some mechanism goes and says, n you know, now move. And that, th this intention is then signaled 500 milliseconds later to a part of the brain that generates the feeling of agency. So this part of my brain is responsible for me feeling, okay, I raised my right hand here. It wasn't Al, it was me. I myself raised my right hand. It's called the feeling of agency. And there's a part of your brain that generates this feeling. And so in this case, yes, the conscious intention comes after after the brain had initiated the action.